Welcome back, everybody. It's the bench. It's time for something that's a little different, something that's very much the same, which is the guy next door is turning on his race car. Uh, we are going to do an LCG. This is an LCG thing, but it's not the way I ordinarily do it. The or way I ordinarily do it is I get some aluminum and I make it. I think I've built five, I'm at four or five, and then we've got the only LCG that I had purchased previously, and I didn't purchase it. My buddy bought an Artful Dodgers Ground Fox, and it's amazing. So what we're gonna look at today is the musically named, listen to that thing go. It's a Sunbeam Tiger, if anyone's curious. YFGRC, this came up in my Amazon suggested, why wouldn't it? I've bought more bead locks than any human should be allowed. Uh, this came up in my Amazon suggested, and it is wildly inexpensive. So there we've got. You know what? Let's just uh, let's let's look at what we got as we go. So this is the YFGRC. That's actually a pretty nice anodized bit. I'm not, I'm not gonna lie. Uh, YFGRC carbon fiber LCG. Uh, these look awfully familiar. It's a very po common thing to use the hex tube for the spacers. Uh, I do not like the look of these. I will probably not be using any of those. Let us take a gander at what the side plates look like they are aluminum I was expecting Delrin at most machine and anodized aluminum for the side plates and I was ex I was anticipating Delrin for the lower but I think you for the lower chassis but I think you heard the clank there aluminum as well it looks you know that looks pretty good i'm not a huge fan of aluminum chassis big long stainless i keep these around uh just to copy off and get some alloy now let's get to the let's get to the meat of the matter packaged more than well enough Supposed to have the kick on the... Alrighty. Oh. It's a vacuum. Vacuum sealed. So, in case I didn't mention, 65 bucks is what this was. Uh, it is really uh, vacuum sealed. What I am curious to get this thing open and find out, and you know what, we're just gonna do a cut here and then when you see it, they'll be open. So there you have the sides. Uh, they feel, they feel sealed. Like they've, they've sealed the edges. I can't tell. Usually there's a little more abrasiveness to the edges. They weigh nothing. Uh, why wouldn't they? So the, uh, Witting or unwitting, willing or unwilling participant for this, let's uh, put these off to the side, is going to be Yella. Uh, Yella is already at the point of, you know, uh, born as an element, uh, born as an ecto, and now there's, there's no ecto. And as he has got like, I, I made all of the links, except the rear uppers are some old Lunsford, some 4 millimeter Lunsford titanium. I've made all the links. So if I have to remanufacture any link to accommodate, the, to be accommodated by this chassis, I can absolutely do that. I don't have a problem with it. Transmission should bolt right up. Um... It, it's and why why he was chosen for this particular expose review 
thing is like look look at his front shock situation right now and then the rears i i'm i fabric cobbled those towers to get more angle on those so uh we have the potential to streamline this guy a bit and oh i i mean i guess i should i should do the due diligence he is rtr configured right now let's see what he weighs going in and see what he weighs coming out he is 5.89 pounds for the remainder of the world, 2,672, it keeps going back and forth, 72, 73 grams. 2672, 2.67 kilos, 5.89 pounds. We will see where he ends up once I start putting these pieces on. And I am going to make an effort to retain his existing bumper. Uh, I mean, obviously his body mounts come off of this, so I'll have to see, what is the spacing? It's exactly the same. So, it should not be a problem to bolt this thing together using all of the OE pieces. The only thing, like the braces and stuff, I will probably have to use these little hex tubes. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to dig right into assembling it, and if any issues arise... Uh, well, I'm gonna I'm gonna pop back in and we're gonna we're gonna talk about it. This teardown is the opposite of assembly. Uh, it's not. It doesn't take long to get to where the front and rear are in, and you can set the body in place and see that obviously none of the lengths have changed. Everything just drops right in. the uh, The thing that I will say, and I have said this before, and I'm sure I will say it again. There's no such thing as an LCG chassis that is just plug and play you don't just stick it on there and go uh, there's going to be some work no matter what particularly if you're working with a body that already has body holes in it so this one i already have them mount there that works great but the spacing of chassis rails tends to be the exact same spacing this is stock element spacing because this just came off of element shock towers so the towers the, the, the shock mounting points will be directly over top, and you'll also see they're right above the middle of the shock tower. So there's really no good way to mount that. So odds are what I'm going to have to do is move the hole somewhere else, uh, probably forward, come off somewhere off of here, uh, be a wider hole out like that. I mean, I have no idea where it's going to go so far. Uh, we'll, we will see. That's as far as I've gotten, but I did want to point out that none of these are plug and play. None of them. No matter where you get them, you're going to have to do some sort of... And they give you... You saw everything that came out of the box is right there. They give you nothing in the way of body mounts whatsoever. That's, that, is, uh, that is all on you. And this would be the delete, which would go there. And I would probably use it in the front if I didn't already have a bumper that I welded up that is my one of my favorites. So all you have are three spacers. So I am going to make an effort to use as much element on here as I can keep the spirit of Yella in there. We're going to find out if that piece where I have all my electronics goes in there. I'm just here for the kicked skid and the shock mounting positions. That's... That's the stuff I need. So if link lengths are all weird and stuff like that, that's fine. We'll address that when we get to it. But uh, body mounts, I think I'm just going to go easy and just start over again on the front body mounts. At this point in the assembly, uh, I have no issues that were not self-generated. In an effort to conserve energy, I basically just moved the whole rig over. And you can do that. All the holes absolutely line up no problem there whatsoever we've got that tiny little bit of pinch typical of how a flat plate chassis works i am going to have to install braces the the front is pretty stiff now that it's got here but with nothing back here we got a lot of flex uh stuff i had neglected to recollect in my brain we've got the whatever angle they've chosen for the skid so that does push everything forward a little bit so you'll notice there's a little bit of forward attitude on there it's pretty it's still got a pretty good swing i don't think caster is going to be affected too badly 
by how much it's pushed forward. Uh, if anything, maybe two millimeters off of the upper link will pull it back into position. I'm using the concave washers pretty much all the way across just because A, they look kind of nice. B, uh, we bought this big bag of gold ones on Amazon because, you know, when Amazon just randomly puts things at reduced prices, they were like $5 for 50 of them. So there's a bunch of rigs running these things. The entire rear end looks exactly the same. Pinion angle hasn't changed. Nothing has really changed. But what I neglected to take into account is that with the kicked skid, everything effectively moves slightly forward. So this drive shaft was far too long. I had to take the internal piece over to the lathe, take about a quarter of an inch off of it, maybe around seven millimeters off, and now we've got suspension travel again. There was, there was zero suspension travel. And also because I run I run servo on axle and battery on servo. I've made this little tray here. And where the tray was, it was all the way out, basically, when I cycled the suspension the first time, it was out like that. It was already, it was all the way past the bumper. So there are, like, like I say, these things are not just bolt on and go. Oh, and also because of the kick of the skid, look at the, uh, look at the clearance between the, <laughs> between the electronics and the spur gear because that tipped forward and that stayed where it always was. So the holes all line up. You can move all of your element stuff straight over if you're moving this from an element. I have no comments about the chassis yet at this point. Oh, uh, seven millimeter spacers all the way around on the shocks. I'm using uh, 22 millimeter button heads and seven millimeter plastic spacers, which every element kit comes with them. So if you're thinking about converting an element over to this type of chassis, absolutely no problem, super easy. And because I'm running servo and axle like this, the front end is nice and rigid because of my, of my weldy bumper. So I'm gonna get back to putting the rest of the pieces on and working towards figuring out what I'm gonna do about a front body mount. I gotta think up something. And it, it basically has to bolt to the outsides of the chassis rails, otherwise I'll probably get some interference with my servo and axle. And we don't want that. But other than that, honestly, to get from two flat rails sitting on the bench to where we are right now took about 30 minutes. So the moving over of the pieces, and if you don't already have a body, if you're not already committed to a body, it would be very easy. And if you're working from an ecto, I believe an ecto would just, just plop right on there. Like I say, the only issues you'll be having is front body mounts as there's no provision, well, and rears. I'm guessing for the rear, that's probably what that slot is for. That's, that's their intention. So if I had bought this setup before I had already built this guy, I would have just bolted, bolt there, bolt there, two body posts straight up. There's nothing saying I won't buy, there's nothing saying this Gozer is this forever body. So, but, 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 also worthy, definitely worthy of note. Because it's LCG and the way the rails come down, Pretty much no matter what you do, you're gonna have chassis below body. And I'm not gonna run any wings of any kind. This, I will say, yes, there's a battery off of it and it doesn't seem like we should have dropped that much weight. 1378 in the grams for the rest of the world, 1377, three pounds, 303. So uh, I do have quite a bit of weight in those wheels over there, those SSD wides are 0.43 pounds each. So over a pound and a half. But at that, we are going to have shed a, a, at least a little bit of weight. And it's not critical. These are rock crawlers. I'm not attempting to build an ultralight or a super light. What I want is the forward kick and I want more shock mounting positions. I tried to clone the existing shock mounting position so I don't have to mess with spring rates again because I, I feel like this guy was tuned in pretty well. I'm gonna have to remount the, the, the battery tray. I'm gonna have to do these body mounts 
And then I am going to uh, put this thing on a rock. It's going to be that easy. We're, we're going to get to see. And no pre-run footage. Yella is uh, capable and accomplished. And I'm hoping, fingers all crossed, I'm hoping that he's only going to get better. So let's fast forward a little bit and see where I ended up. Here are the rails and front shock towers, and I was running keys because I couldn't get the shock angle I wanted. Because it was born as an ecto with trailing arms, I had to make towers that would perform as normal towers. Uh, later on, it had gotten sides with sliders, and uh, we have omitted those because when you get that kicked skid, uh, it makes your sliders all weird. And uh, rear chassis brace did not go into service. So this was all removed and replaced by the chassis rails. And effectively what I did when I bought the kit, because center chassis, like a little bumper delete guy, two side wings, which honestly, I mean, it's nice that they're aluminum, but I would have preferred they had been plastic. And then all the screws, I didn't, I didn't use a single screw from that. So, so I used the three spacers and I use the rails. I think most people would probably use the plate. It's really nicely made and probably the delete, but I I didn't want to really futz with link lengths. So it was basically just moved straight over. If you can remember how it sat before this started, uh, I can already tell that I either need to lay the shocks down more or respring because I haven't put it on the scale yet, but I can tell you that it's lighter because it is sitting noticeably higher than it was previously. I went relatively quick and dirty on the front body mount. I basically just took some aluminum and I, I cold bent it. I just hammered them so they didn't come out super great. It occurs to me now, after I spent the time making them, uh, I could have just taken some angle stock and just made that. That's why I didn't bother to paint them or anything. They're they're cut in that little, so they, they follow the line of the shock. So uh, I would never be running my front shock more forward than that position. If anything, it's probably going to have to go down some. Uh, there's no interference with the body. The body mounts exactly as it did before. I just put all the chassis braces on. The rear was particularly loosey-goosey. It's solid as a rock now. Like There is some lateral flex. I don't know if it's something that will be noticeable at all. I think it looks really good. Uh, I, think, I, I recommend pairing it with some, some flat washers because... And not to sound like an idiot, but carbon fiber is not metal. So you can't treat it with the same sort of abuse that you would metal. I, I basically powered this up to make sure that the spur gear is not touching the box that's housing all the electronics. It's very close. And I'm using an adapter, a little intermediate plate in there so I could easily move this or now I'm thinking because the electronics are so small I'm, I'm thinking of going to something smaller than this or perhaps cutting this box down so it's not so tall but before this thing sees rocks I think we need to do that most important of things which is find out where we were we were formerly 5.89 pounds I want to say 2,672 grams, 2,672, seems right. So we'll start with pounds again. 5.428, so call it 5.43 pounds. We pulled off just over half a pound. Now, if you were to put, ooh, if you were to put this stuff on, I think you might be right back at it. Uh, 5.75. Now, this piece is pretty low. I really, I can't 100% see the utility of these unless you need, absolutely need to mount electronics to them. Uh, I've actually, I don't know if I've ever seen aluminum 
side wings like that. 543, 2,463 grams. So it lost just over 300 grams. I mean, it's an appreciable amount. I They don't seem that heavy until you pick up just that. And a rail with one tower on it is 100 grams. And I, 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 of course, I didn't weigh the chassis sides before. But now, so I, I wasn't particularly concerned with shedding 300 grams. That's a light body. 2337, 2460, 120 grams. That's a, that's a light body. Most of the weight in this rig lives in the wheels. I think we can do the quick. 2337, 2150. So 185, almost 190 grams per corner. So that means 760 grams of this vehicle uh, as weight as the wheel tire combos. I like to stay around, I find the sweet spot is right in the 200 gram area per corner. Any more than that, and you're kind of past a point of diminishing returns. And I find that drag brake actually suffers because the wheels are too heavy and they just kind of want to drag the rig with it. I tried to clean the wheels up as best as I could, clean up all of his internal stuff as best as I could. Uh, you've got fairly typical, uh, th this is the low speed control you can get from a, uh, this is a 1650 Outrunner on 3S. But I mean, you can watch the spur rotating. So, uh, structurally, I had to omit one spacer. I had to shorten the front drive shaft, which makes sense because the, the gearbox is sitting at an angle now. But other than that, I did not adjust any links. Any link change would result in a shorter link, and I like to run a long link. I will look at the math on my uppers versus lowers because there's, I like to stay in around that 87% ratio of upper to lower. But he's been pretty competent as, as configured. So now we will see. I'm going to run him just like this. These are, yeah, element blues in the front and element grays in the rear. Uh, I don't have my chart on me, so I can't remember where that falls in the numbers. But I feel like like it's it's all the way up because he lost a he lost half a pound of sprung weight. So that's the weight you want to get rid of. I'm hoping for performance increase based on adjustability, and I'm hoping for a little more front bite thanks to the kicked to the angled skid. Because as you see, he has no he has no added weight. He's running alloy C hubs. He he does have a brass diff cover, but but that's it. Brass on the front, aluminum on the back, mostly just because they're pretty. But like in terms of added brass, he doesn't really have anything. And he, he does he does pretty well this way. We're gonna see now if $65 worth of I did I didn't mean to mention this before this was over. 3.6 millimeter, 3.5, it's 3.5 millimeter. So three and a half millimeter is, is nice because most plate you're gonna see is gonna be eighth, 3.1 millimeter or three millimeter. So three and a half should be a little sturdier. This would have gone together even more quickly were I not trying to accommodate a body that had already been fitted to it. As I said, it would be running, it, it, if this guy gets a body change at any point in the future, the rear posts will move from this offset here to just right off of there. And then I will just run that nifty little aluminum bumper delete there. So all that's left to see is how he tackles some of the usual lines. We'll take him up Daphne's line, Daphne's other line, we'll take him through the notch, we'll do, we'll do the usual stuff. Uh, piece them together, and then I'll uh, I'll let you know 
what my final thoughts are. I mean, is it worth it, etc. If you don't have to do this, it's looking pretty promising. Like if you haven't bought a body yet, uh, you're in good. If you want to keep your exact body and the exact configuration, requires a little more work. But I have no complaints at this point about the fit nor the finish of the rails. They look pretty good. Like I say, edges feel sealed. Uh, pretty nice, pretty nice. Let's see that which is most important. How does he wheel? We'll start with some relatively easy stuff. Uh, Daphne's line is a, is a well-known location. We're gonna find out first if I've dropped so much weight now that the springs are an issue. Stay in about there. It's right here where stuff will either go or go badly. Oh, real nice. Real, real nice. Now, uh, first experience of the low skid there. Went through a little. Yeah, the, uh, the, the, the clearance now is something I'm going to have to get used to. Daphne's line, absolutely no problem. Little hang there. I'll, 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 I'll get used to it. Uh, on to Daphne's other line. Figure if we're gonna do it, might as well go into where everybody gets stuck. Straight up this. Uh, we don't get stuck now, I guess. Gotta get a little bump, a little bump past. Yeah, front, there, there's, you know, this has nothing to do with construction or quality. This is just, you've got to get used to how much lower that front lip of the chassis hangs down. It's a little offline of where I like to be, I think. It's really going to be how much he can pull. I think the rear is just buried in. Yeah, it's dragging on the back, but yeah, that's a that's a that's a failed effort. This is a tough this is a tough line for anyone. Oh right, right there. Oh that was nice. No, no complaints there. Again, a little, little, just, just pivoting rear axle getting hung, but that's nothing to do with the chassis at all. So I, as I mentioned, I was hoping for an improvement in forward drive. And not only do we have the improvement in forward drive, I've just got it, I've got it mired right there, but it really, like it's got better break over. The, the nose wants to stay down, which is honestly, that's what I was hoping for. Keep ramping up the difficulty here. This is, a, this is a bump on. See how we pull to the side here. Yeah, he's got a lot of drive, a lot of drive now. That's a little bit of a cheater line there, pushing that far right. But I can get it tipped up so high and he doesn't fall over. Set it down with some dig. See if I can pivot that front end around. It's pretty high centered there. It's gonna be a, a, a the, the biggest part of this is gonna be the mental adjustment of now where the chassis exists. It's like, I think, yeah, I, I managed to swing it around. Now I'm just trying to get it upset to the side. Oh, we'll, we'll throw some side hill in here as well. I'll go, I'll go the big, the two side, we'll go to the two mean side hills. Absolutely no problem with that. 
Still have the gates out here for the upcoming sixth line. Might as well take a shot at it and see what we can do here. No, no, absolutely no problem at all. Just get that wheel speed down. So let us instead just back it right back down. Out of my way. Didn't quite get that where I wanted it. There we are. Now this is generally a problem, this transition. As you can see, very light driver rear, but it's so flat. Uh, this is generally the point at which something will cut loose. But I mean, even at this moment right here, the driver's front is still planted. I, I'm just waiting for it to, to throw the weight and it doesn't look like it's going to. So that was a very fortunate loss of half a pound. Apparently, it looks like his CG moved down significantly, despite the fact that you can see, it looks like it more to my eye than it does in the camera, but the body is just, the body looks very high. Like I feel like I could pull him down quite a bit and lower that CG even more. But at the same time, I mean, right here, uh, driver front is now about to transition onto something that's like a little mini wall right below that little brick shape. So he has to try to cut between that and then there's a little right here. That will want to shovel the wheel that way and then this guy's going to try to roll it out. So this is a really tough point to navigate. It doesn't look like it. It's deceptively bad because each way you cut because you gotta give it a little up angle. He side hills like, he side hills absolutely with the best of them now. Rolling through here. Absolutely, absolutely no problem. I was expecting a much worse outcome. We'd be remiss if I didn't attack the just straightforward traction test that is slick rock this will really let me know how that forward bite has changed that passenger pulling that little spot right there we we shuttled over too far due to my ham fisting of the driving but right there that pull right there bump through that's that's just straight drive that's significantly more drive on the forward on the front tires than he had before uh, everything about that ascent right there was a positive let's try to push it really wide right this is a bad this is a bad line here because most people can't get their rear couldn't even get the thought out. Uh, that kidney bean right there, most people can't pull the tire up over that because they don't have enough drive in the front. His front drive has increased significantly. We must, of course, attempt this line at dead limit. This famously being the line that only Daphne the Sport managed to clear in the, I guess the intended running line, which is staying here in the center of this notch, it was right here that everybody else did a bit of a tail stand. He's, he's starting to go into one, but you can see, you can see that, that driver front, we're going to drop, 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 right back down. So he's biting, he's, he's over biting with passenger rear so to try to counter that we'll swing this way the difference here being I mean look how high 
that nose can get and he's not coming over. So we've got we've got some stuff hanging up underneath. A little bump position and then it will just keep that front end pushed down. So I would say he ran it pretty much equivalently well to what Daphne had done previously in this line, but he's got significantly less ground clearance because he is, of course, not portaled. This is honestly one of those situations where uh, I become afeard. Like if I if I start going in and making setup changes, is it going to get worse? Okay, if that if that passenger front stays to the right of that point. This is just about, do the deep woods have enough traction to overcome that wall that the rear tires are at? Wow. Again, there's, there's the low, there's the low belly. Just a little, a little bump off. I mean, that was, that was great. And, and his suspension, and also, his suspension is working really well. Like, really, really well. So let's try it. Let's take one more cut at this. Okay, almost no one can do where he's gonna go right now. Because as you can see, there's a, there's a bit of slide going on there. Tires are unloaded. He's really only got weight on one tire right now. Every little bit of throttle. I just, I don't know if the deep woods have the, the... Okay, that's, that's definitely some low weight because he, he rolled out of that. Okay, um, how do we wrap this up quick view fashion? Because the quick view, which is what, this definitely falls into the quick view series. The quick view does not take into consideration things like durability or longevity. In terms of bang for the buck, this is $65. And like I said, unlike most, I used very little of it. I used rails and spacers. I didn't use the wings. I didn't use the center chassis. Will they get used in the future? Almost certainly. Look at, look at that, that, that amount of drive right there. Is it gonna pull? I can see the, I can see the rear link hung. Is the noticeable, is there a noticeable increase in performance? Yes. And I would reckon that this setup is untuned. I've made, I made no changes to spring oil setup, link position, anything. I basically just copied over from the one to the other. As I mentioned, the only thing I had to do was shorten that drive shaft so that it would actually clear. Other than that, everything bolted on. We lost half a pound of all sprung weight and everything is improved. Oh, let's, you know, I can't, I can't, that's a, that's a falsehood. I can't make that statement just yet. We haven't tried to descend yet. So let's let's go just straight down the face here. See how the weight distribution looks. The, the even the even the short body outrunner is the clamp that I like cuz Little, little hang on the chassis there. Knock it loose, the front wheel. Yeah, see, I can... There's a good amount of torque in that servo. And this is without dig. This isn't a dig descent. This is, I'm descending under power. One uh, passenger rear up about two, three inches off the ground. That was effectively flat. Just, just to prove that, you know, it is as steep as it looks. 
So on the one hand, yes, it's flat plates. Uh, what is there really to foul up? And I clarify again, this is under the quick view format, which doesn't mean the episode is quick. It means that there's not the, the amount of wheel time that this chassis has gotten, you've seen all of it. So I can't speak to the things that come in time. What I can speak to is relative or perceived construction quality, which seems quite good and wholly unrelated, but uh, worthy at least to me of mention so that I can make myself angry about it later. Uh, if my, if the app that is in my gimbal here, you can see the camera moving on its own. I can't film and drive at the same time. So this little robot is my filming buddy. Uh, if it tries to connect to Wi-Fi <laughs> and it loses connection, apparently the app crashes. Oh, see, my robot buddy thought he was going to drop there, but he did not. It's, I don't want to gush. Uh, I don't want to be like, it's super good. And, and a full disclaimer here, full disclosure here at the end. That's a good frame right there. Uh, I don't know if this is a clone of some other chassis. It's not a clone of the Artful Dodgers. I held them up next to each other. They don't look the same. There's a lot more shock holes on here. It could be something else, and I don't know. So I'm not endorsing you go out and buy it if you know that this is a previously existing chassis from someone that makes chassis. But as I mentioned, I've in my fleet, in the Crawler Canyon fleet, there is one purchased LCG, now two, one name brand from Artfield Dodgers, the Ground Fox, and it's great, but it's also at a price point that I would say is not for everyone. So it occurs to me now, if you take away the little bit of name brand stuff, like the J Concepts body and the Duratrax tires, he is primarily now an Amazon creation. He has an Amazon chassis, he has an Amazon servo, he has Amazon wheels. Uh, he doesn't have an Amazon powertrain. That that's that's better stuff. He's got that Team Brood Outrunner and an AGI Innovations Ninja. He is a very capable vehicle because, like you saw right there, he can push that up and that tire will climb so high, and he just keeps going. Like right there, I'm trying to get that end to flop. Like right here, that should have flopped. He's he's powerful good. So it, this gets a conditional recommended. I don't know if there were any infringements on intellectual property in its construction. So that I can't speak to. What I can speak to is, are you getting your money's worth if you spend 65 bucks on effectively what are just chassis rails. If you don't use all the bits, I would say yes. They're thick, they're light. One of the lighter vehicles in my fleet, sub six pounder, dropped half a pound. And he's the only thing here that could maybe be close to be being built into something light because there have been no efforts on here until now, until the introduction of the LCG. There was nothing on this rig that was intended to shave weight. And as, I, as I've mentioned, I think enough times, the, the shaving of weight was incidental and welcomed, but not, not the, the point of this. I wanted better shock mounting positions. I wanted more forward bite and I got all of those things. I feel like it was absolutely $65 well spent. So with that, I leave it to you. I will put a link to the item below that is provided that it is still in stock at Amazon. You can never really tell. Things come and go in lightning. Uh, my buddy, uh, when I mentioned that I had ordered this, my buddy said, oh yeah, I've seen that thing before. I have never encountered this before, but then again, I'm not looking for it. So any of you who have looked for it and maybe perhaps slid it over to save for later, 
I think it's worth it. Like the construction quality is good. The assembly is relatively easy. If you don't have to fit around to a body, it's really easy. There might be some off the shelf options for body mounts that I don't know about. It's just easier for me to fabricate them. Uh, they'll get cleaned up. Uh, this'll be body mount option version 1.0. There will most likely be a 2.0. And yellow will move on now a little stronger and, and uh, a little bit better of a climber than even he was before. And his side hilling is dramatically improved. Dig is still very good. This is a good rig now. He was a good rig before. This might be a great rig now. So we'll, we'll call that there. This will, this will be this for this. I do indeed thank you for watching. If you have any other questions, comments, or concerns that perhaps I did not address in this, that is 100% expected. Uh, just put them in the comments below. If you uh, feel like it, drop a like. If you're feeling extra spicy, you could even subscribe. Go through the old videos. There are hundreds. And uh, I do love hashtag from the comments. So if you have any other comments about like what to do, what to try, uh, do this, do that, throw it down there. I take everything into consideration. So for the very last time, thank you for watching everyone. And uh, please do two things, do two things. Tune in for the next one and do your very best to have a good one, everybody.